Hi, guys. Cosmo-style relationship advice for women has long been a staple of the Western woman's version of educational literature. They've been spoon-fed a diet of how-tos when it comes to men, everything from how to get a man to commit to how to drive men crazy with desire and other self-pedestalizing gynocentric claptrap for women by women, all of whom skipped school the day they taught how to be a decent enough human being to warrant a decent man's attention. It's relationship bullshit in a bag, wrapped in pink ribbons and peddled to a demographic prone to purchase said bullshit and other products, provided they don't challenge them to woman up and act like adults. I've always thought it to be pretty sad, even watching it from a distance. An entire culture of miserable women buying and selling more misery from each other. It's like watching Rosie O'Donnell read a diet book while sitting on her bovine ass shoveling chocolate cake down her throat. And of course, that is hardly a surprise to anyone subscribed to this channel. We've all known our share of women who approach life like they had an instruction manual that came with a tiara and glass slippers only to bellyache about where all the good men went. The one saving grace about the garbage advice industry is that it is primarily a woman's market. Well, mostly. There are some exceptions, unfortunately. They are better known as pickup artists, or PUAs. They have websites that are often mischaracterized by the media as MRA sites, like Roosh V's Return of Kings, a site that unironically claims to appeal to, and I quote, masculine men, a thinly disguised mirror of the antiquated and comical manly man. But of course, as you read between the lines, you just find another haven for brain-dead pussyhounds, totally insecure gynocentric simps hiding behind imagined forests of chest hair and preening for each other from article to article in an ongoing attempt to manufacture real spines. MGTOW, in my experience, is about avoiding, in one way or another, the world full of shallow, useless, and often dangerous women that PUAs dedicate their pathetic lives to impressing. And indirectly, that means that most MGTOW that I've seen avoid being the kind of man who struts around the comments at Return of Kings in a homoerotic fashion show of ideas. There are, of course, exceptions, but that's my general impression. If you follow the link I've provided below, you'll see, just underneath an ad for the Super Seducer system on PS4, PC, and Mac, a headline on the very important topic of why you should definitely approach hot girls wearing headphones. I read the article, certain that it would cover with great aplomb the critical issue of getting women you don't know to remove their headphones and talk to you. But alas, that was not the complete picture. It was actually an article criticizing another PUA who had written his own article on getting women to take off their headphones. I shouldn't have been surprised, I suppose. As I said, this is a subject of great importance to the average man in modern times, and indeed the man who wrote the original Hot Girl in Headphone article parks himself at a domain called The Modern Man, linked. His name is Dan Bacon, and like Roosh V, his work is the bearded version of shitty Cosmo articles, complete with the vacuous absence of personal values and self-respect you would expect to find in products designed for consumption by the average 20-something woman. Mr. Bacon's online presence is marked by repeated images of him with really hot women. Note the look of smug confidence, the steel in his eyes that undoubtedly matches the metal in his spine. Why, I'm sure he barely notices the blonde hottie nibbling at his neck. And then there's this shot from his Facebook page, positioning his head next to the tits of a woman he claims to be his wife. Something particularly impressed me about Dan Bacon, though. 
impressed me to the point that I all but forgot about the emergent and important art form of approaching hot women wearing headphones. Dan has a specialty, and it isn't Sennheiser. Dan specializes in getting your ex-girlfriend back. I mean, he has other products, like teaching hopeful beta cucks how to pretend to be alphas. But what he focuses on most is reaching out to men who've been dumped and showing them how to get the woman back who dumped them. A quick run through his YouTube channel reveals a playlist obsessed with the subject. The video titles promise the results. How to seduce your ex-girlfriend. Getting your ex back fast. Get your ex to come crawling back. Getting your ex back when she doesn't love you anymore. Four tips on getting an ex back who wants nothing to do with you. And it doesn't stop there, guys. More of them, title after title of Dan Bacon's videos, all make the same promise. And this is what makes Dan Bacon such a remarkable PUA. He doesn't just encourage you to get a woman. He encourages you to go after women who want to throw up at the very side of you. Women who have proclaimed, often publicly, that they want nothing more than for you to stay away from them. After all, isn't that what self-respecting, self-actualized alpha male silverback men do? He grovels and begs for pussy from the least likely source of acceptance. That would certainly be consistent with his spiel. I viewed one of the videos in its entirety on your behalf. You're welcome. What is absent in it, and I assume in the rest of them, is any notion of whether looking for acceptance from someone who doesn't love or respect you, also known as looking for water in an empty bucket, is a good idea for anyone. This is what bothers me about Dan Bacon and other PUAs and always has. Women are attracted to strength, self-certainty, and rigid spines in men. Typically men who would not give two seconds of their time chasing women like little beta cucks, and certainly not chasing women who've dumped them. Dan Bacon specializes in sending men to grovel at the feet of women who have already rejected them. Now, of course, he'll deny this. He'll emphatically assert that he, in fact, suggests just the opposite of groveling. He just suggests acting in a way that will spark loving feelings in her, in ways that will make her gina tingle. Of course, that's bullshit. All he's doing is dressing up groveling to make it look like something else. And there's a reason he can sell that. Let's back up a minute and take a look at that. In several of my talks, I refer to the process of grief using the model devised by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And that is that grief comes in five stages. One, shock and denial, where we at first cannot believe that a loss has happened, like in that of a wife or girlfriend. Many men have been there, being served with divorce papers or even being dumped by text. They are bowled over by it, not believing what they're reading, not believing what is sitting right there in their hands. Stage two is anger, when the reality sets in and the emotional upheaval starts. That fucking bitch. And then comes stage three, bargaining. Now, there are two more stages after that, grief and acceptance, but I'm going to stop at stage three because that's where Dan Bacon wants you to stop as well. Stage three is where we just begin to feel the pain of a loss. It is a particularly intense and vulnerable part of the process, and that is where the bargaining comes in. People often pray to the God of their choice when the loss of a loved one to death is imminent, promising to be a new man or woman if God will just spare their loved one. Similarly, people will try to bargain their way out of a relationship breakdown, promising to be a new man or woman when they are confronted with the pain of being left. It's a natural part of grief, a necessary but very painful thing to go through on the path to accepting the loss and moving on in life, often with valuable lessons learned in the process. 
The sad reality is that if you are in the bargaining phase of losing a relationship, you are supposed to lose your efforts to negotiate that end to your pain, especially if she's leaving you because she doesn't love you or want you anymore. The sooner you accept that and face the pain, the sooner the pain will pass and that you can move on to better things. This is the part of the human process of grief that Dan Bacon wants to hijack and monetize. He wants to exploit men at their most vulnerable when they can and should be learning the most important lesson in their lives, that they can survive the loss of a woman and come out on the other end better for the experience. That grief process, I'll wager dollars to donuts, is responsible for leading many men to true red pills, not the kind being peddled by the likes of Roosh and Dan Bacon. PUAs, even on their best days, sell men on the idea of modifying their behavior, fabricating a false self-image, in servile deference to the gynocentrism that is actually weakening them as men. The point I'm making, of course, is not to avoid the risk of rejection and loss by avoiding women. It is simply that self-actualization, which also happens to be the most potent attractor of women, is much more a product of rejecting the right women and not seeking their acceptance. And it certainly means not looking for water in that empty bucket. Anyone following that crap advice is bargaining away their self-respect and making themselves the kind of man that is much more attractive to borderline and other kinds of abusive women. The say this, don't say that, Cosmo slash Return of Kings micromanagement of your communication with women has a much better name than pickup artistry. It's called being fake, insecure, and dependent. It's opting for a script written by someone who paid models with big tits to pose next to them for their branding efforts because you can't stand on your own words in your own way regardless of whether anyone likes it. Because you like pussy more than you like yourself. And the truth is that men who value pussy more than themselves are most likely to end up with neither. But hey, They can, if they're lucky, end up with Dan Bacon's program of self-loathing weakness packaged and sold like a get-rich-quick-on-real-estate scheme, all for the price of a few shekels. I noticed in the Return of Kings article linked that the criticism that Dan Bacon got boiled down to the idea that he didn't go far enough in describing how to lay yourself prostrate before women without letting on that that was exactly what you're doing. His weakness from gynocentrism lacked enough detail to satisfy the critic at Return of Kings. I must dissent from that opinion, though. I think Dan Bacus gave us all the detail we'll ever need to know where he stands and exactly what he wants you to do. The only question is how many men will be desperate enough to do it. And that is it for this talk today. As always, I do hope you've enjoyed, even if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.